In this video series, I'm going to be sharing about the meta pattern. And to be honest with you, it's something that I wish I had discovered uh, when I first started learning NLP. And the reason for that is because when you, the meta pattern takes the massive amount of NLP techniques for transformation, for coaching, for influence and in communication. I, I, I think Robert Diltz in the Encyclopedia of NLP now has like, he must have tens of thousands of NLP techniques that they've either modeled or whatever. The meta pattern takes all of that massive amount of information and shrinks it down into a really manageable step-by-step -step process that if you want to make changes for yourself or you're a coach and you could be just beginning your journey as a coach, I would say learn this first because it will make you so much more effective. It will improve your skills massively. And even if you're already experienced, I had been a coach for years before I came across this framework and it immediately made me a better and a much more effective coach with my clients. And it really organized the way that I think about change work now and the NLP influence and communication model. So what I wanna do is in this short video series is give you very uh, small bite-sized pieces of what the meta pattern is so that you can start to develop your skill set in a much more effective way. Also, uh, if you look below the video, you're gonna see a couple of links. The first is gonna be access to a free training where you can come learn with me live over Zoom and I'm gonna be training you in how to do the meta pattern itself. So if any of this is at all interesting, go click the link and sign up and register for that training now. Uh, you, if, on the other hand, you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, there's also a link there for you apl to apply to one-on-one -on -one coaching. Let's get into it. So the meta pattern, meta meaning above, right? So if we were to zoom out and look at NLP communication, right? Every single transformative process that happens has to run through these four steps. Before I forget, I wanna give credit to John Overdurf for languaging change work and influence in this way. He came up with the term meta pattern, yeah? He's describing a phenomenon in coaching that all of the greats are already doing, all of the great NLP communicators already do, but this way of conceptualizing and thinking about this uh, allows you to picture uh, the communication model in a really simple way, and it, it just makes everything a lot easier to understand. So shout out to John Overdurf, uh, shout out Sean Carson, Jess Marion, and Sarah Carson, where I learned this, uh, where I learned it from them. And they also have a great book, if you want to check that out. So anyway, the, the four steps of the meta pattern, very simple, very, very simple. One, associate to problem context or current context. Bear with me, this is going to seem really straightforward, but I'm going to share exactly why each of these steps, even though they're simple, are extremely important and you must do them properly. Okay, so the first, associate to problem context or present context. The second thing is you're going to disassociate. You're going to have them disassociate from the problem context. This could be a formal disassociation where you have them step out, look at, etc. Or if you can just get them to shake off the state, right? We need them once we've lit up the problem state neurology, we need to get them out of that neurology so that we can bring in a new state, bring in new resources, which is actually the third step. The third step is uh, get the resources you want, right? So the resources could be state, beliefs, values, etc. right? What are the resources we want to have? And the fourth and final step of the meta pattern is the collapse, meaning we take those resources and then we bring them back to the context where the client or individual wants the change. Okay, four steps, extremely, extremely simple. While you watch these videos, keep those steps in your mind. In the meantime, I wanna share a little bit about the neuroscience. Every state that we go into, be it a good state or a bad state, 
has a corresponding neurology in the mind, right? Happiness is a set of neural pathways, yeah? Um, you know, focus, uh, determination is a set of neural pathways. It's a way of using the mind and body. So when we have problem states, for example, let's say you have a fear of public speaking, right? As an example, you're, maybe you're a kid and the teacher asks you to go up to the blackboard and you make a mistake and it doesn't feel good while you're up there. So what's happening is the state is getting linked to the context of public speaking. Think, um, feeling bad is getting, th those neurons are getting fired with the neurons of the context of public speaking. Now, in neuroscience, we have a principle known as Hebb's Law. Hebb's Law states that neurons that fire together, wire together. So this kid goes up, they do their public speaking, they feel bad while they're in the context, feeling bad, public speaking, wires it together. Oftentimes, one trial learning is enough to create that problem. Uh, and other times it takes more reinforcement and more repetition. It just depends on the person, the intensity of the emotion. But in essence, what we have here is a recipe for either our quote unquote limitations or our strengths. Another kid goes up there, says something, everybody laughs in a positive way, and he learns that being in front of the, the classroom is, leads to attention, love, happiness, etc. So what happens? Attention, love, happiness gets wired to public speaking. So all of a sudden, we see a very different state begin to emerge. Now, what's really cool about this is that all of our recent research demonstrates that these neural pathways can change and they can change rather quickly. That we have something called neuroplasticity. And the way that the meta pattern works, if you'll remember, is we have our problem state, right? Remember, step one of the problem state is to associate the client to the context. Why? Because we want the neurons associated with the problem state to get fired, right? There's a, um, there's a saying where um, you gotta feel it to heal it, right? It's not so much that you have to feel it to heal it, it's that you have to access it to begin to take the new state and wire it in, right? So by eliciting and becoming clear on what the problem context is, we actually gain access to the very neurosynapses that are are the problem state, as well as the environmental triggers so that we can begin to add in a new state of consciousness there. Now, there's something else that's really cool about this. Uh, in addition to the brain being pl uh, flexible in that we can learn new states, in addition to that, the, there's also a principle called neural Darwinism that is gonna be extremely beneficial for you to understand as a coach. And neural Darwinism states that your brain, my brain, our brains, uh, evolved in an uh, evolutionary landscape that took place a long time ago, right? And in that landscape, efficiency was prized over accuracy. Efficiency was prized over accuracy. So, neural connections that get used the most often get reinforced, they become easier and more efficient to go down, right? So if you think about, you know, the best metaphor, the best way to picture this is a sled, and the sled goes down the hill, it begins to groove into the snow, yeah? And the more the sled goes down the hill, the deeper the groove gets, the easier it is to go down the hill. Well, in neural Darwinism, if the brain learns that you're not using a particular state anymore, the brain will actually take the fatty substance known as myelin that makes that groove and it will take it away and add it to the new neural pathway. So once we get the client out of the problem state, we begin to bring in the resources and attach them to context and we do this with enough either repetition or uh, strength of uh, state, in, in other words, the experience is intense enough, then the brain starts to learn, okay, this is the new neural pathway we want, 
And the more that new resource begins to get reinforced in the problem context, the more the brain begins to dissolve the problem state. So over time, and, and when I say time, that can be, again, very quickly, that could even be a one trial learning. Uh, sometimes it takes more repetitions. Over time, the problem state becomes extremely difficult to access, right? So, tiny itty bitty piece of a neurological understanding for you. Uh, this is short brief introduction on the meta pattern. I gave you a lot of information. Uh, sign up for the training. Uh, this is gonna be a full NLP training experience. We're gonna be on Zoom together, and not only am I gonna be demonstrating how to find the actual environmental triggers, I'm gonna be teaching you how to calibrate to make sure you actually have the client's problem state, right? We're gonna be making sure you can disassociate them and get the resources, and then running you through the collapse. You're also gonna have opportunities to practice right there on the training. So go ahead, sign up for the link, and make sure you look for the next video, which uh, will be released tomorrow, or is already been released, depending on when you're watching this.